Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is a relatively late review of the HP Omen. It took me a lot longer to get this review unit in than I thought it would and when it came in last week I actually thought maybe I'm not even going to do it but you know what, it's better late than never or so I thought so here it is. Now if for whatever reason you guys feel like I shouldn't do older products like this, well relatively older products like this, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to just avoid doing relatively older products like this. I understand. Uh, okay so HP's notebooks. For the past couple of years, I have found them very boring, to be honest. They're visually unexciting. Spec-wise, they're not very exciting. I've actually found no reason to even be interested in them, let alone purchase one for myself. But when the Omen was announced in November last year, I thought it was pretty cool. It's got a very unique styling. Spec-wise, it was pretty good, so I thought I'd check it out. Here's my review. So if you've seen my other videos, I like cool packaging, and the Omen has cool packaging. The box is a trapezoid, and it has a pretty nice looking sleeve. So you can slide that sleeve off and you open up that box and the notebook looks pretty cool in there. And underneath that is a box where they put the AC adapter and some other accessories. I think the presentation of this notebook is really nice. So the specs of the unit I'm reviewing, it's got a 2.5 gigahertz i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, a GTX 860M, and a regular 1080p screen. But the cool part about this is the price. Unlike more glamorous brands like Apple and Razer, Hewlett Packard products actually go on sale once in a while. So you can often save one or 200 bucks on this product at big box stores like Best Buy. This particular unit costs 1600 bucks on sale. And so while we're staying at the lid of the notebook here, let's take a closer look at the details. So when you peer really closely at it, it's got an alternating pattern of these small triangles. I think it's simple and it works pretty well. The bottom of the notebook is also plastic. So it's got these vents on the bottom and there's two fans underneath that draw the air in. There is an SD slot here, but we'll talk about that later. I wanna talk about this rubber rim that lines the perimeter of the bottom of the notebook. So if you look at it, you'll notice that aside from the gap in the rubber at the front and the back, this rim almost makes a full seal and it kind of prevents the cool air from getting sucked into the intake vent. I'd wish they put a few more gaps into this rubber rim just so that more air could get into there, but we'll get into temperatures later. HP says you can technically open this up to access the internals, but it's not user friendly. Like there's no screws and things like that. You basically have to peel stuff off and kind of ruin adhesives. So I didn't bother with that. The HP Omen weighs a little bit less than 4.7 pounds. It's a little longer than a Retina MacBook Pro, about an inch or so longer, but similar in width. And in terms of its thickness, the Omen's a little bit thicker, maybe about a quarter inch or so. And in this shot, you can kind of see the design here. The whole notebook has this trapezoidal kind of taper to it. On the back of the notebook, you can see the chrome hinge with the blue ends, and you can also see the exhaust vents and all the ports. Here's a closer look at that blue hinge. So my guess is that they were trying to mimic the look of a titanium car exhaust. I mean, it's not for everyone, but I think they did a pretty good job to make it look good. And I think it gives the whole notebook a very distinct look. The AC adapter is quite big, and for all you Redditors, here's a banana for a scale. It's a 180 watt adapter. So basically all the ports are on the back of this computer. So the AC adapter plug lights up when you're charging it, and it lights up white when the battery is fully charged. Along the back, there's also four USB 3 slots, an HDMI, and a mini display. So I was able to use this port to output 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. And lastly, it's got one of those combo microphone headset jacks. Just make sure that your headset that you're using supports this. So because this thing doesn't have a built-in ethernet port, HP throws in an ethernet dongle, which I thought was a pretty nice touch. The dongle has this weird rubber band that goes around it. It, it can come on and off, but I couldn't really figure out what it was for. So the left side of the notebook has no ports. It's simple and clean. And the right side of the notebook has that SD slot that I mentioned before. Okay, here's the thing. It's great that they put an SD reader onto a gaming notebook. I mean, some notebooks don't even have them, especially gaming notebooks like the Razer Blade. But the one they put in here is really annoying to use. You can't insert a card unless you kind of lift up the notebook. And even then it's a bit of a fumble. Remember how the notebook tapers in towards the bottom, right? So you can't see what you're doing unless you put your head down to the notebook level and kind of look underneath. And removing the card is even more difficult. So if you plan on getting this notebook for photography or video use, you'll probably want to get an external reader. Okay, we're finally done with the exterior stuff. The trackpad feels really nice. It feels like glass and has a very similar texture to the MacBook trackpad, which I think is like the de facto standard for good trackpads. It's also really, really big. I think it's actually the biggest I've seen. It's bigger than an iPhone 6, and it's only slightly smaller than a Moto X. And the weird thing is it doesn't actually track that well. It skips a bit, and sometimes it doesn't register inputs. I don't know if it's a software thing or a hardware thing, but overall it just feels kind of janky. But as a gaming notebook, you may not use it that often if you have your mouse plugged in. Okay, the keyboard. The chiclet keyboard feels pretty good. 
I actually typed a lot of stuff from work on this keyboard and I got used to it quickly. So notice how there are six keys on the left side of the keyboard. So these are programmable keys, which are kind of cool. Like you can set up macros and stuff for them. But if you notice, it shifts the entire keyboard to the right. So positioning feels a little bit off. I misclicked quite a few times because of this. So if you're trying to hit the escape button, just out of reflex, you're gonna reach up and kind of hit the top left of that area. But that's where that programmable P1 key is. It happened more often than I thought it would, but maybe that's just me. And I really think your mileage will vary depending on the keyboards that you currently use. The other things in the bottom right, you'll see the up and down directional keys. They feel a little squashed. I've mentioned this before, but I like my up arrows above my left and right keys. But aside from that, the keyboard is really quite good. So you probably know the backlighting on the keyboard of the Omen can change colors. So HP includes some software. You can control the color of various zones on the keyboard, uh, including like, you know, the left side, the right side, WASD keys. You can change the speakers. You can make the speakers pulse to music and stuff like that. It all works really well, but the novelty of it wore off really quickly for me. The backlighting isn't as bright as you'd think it would be, especially in photos and in certain videos. I actually had to film this in the evening with the lights turned down just to capture it properly. It's definitely not a bright LED system. I would say it's actually dimmer than most keyboard backlighting, which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're into. So this thing rocks a 15.6 inch 1080p touchscreen. 1920 by 1080, the colors are really good and it's very bright. I don't have equipment to measure the brightness, but it's noticeably brighter than most notebook screens I've used. I think HP put in a great screen for this notebook. So fan noise, when this thing's idling, it's basically silent. 20 decibels are just basically the sound of your room. When the fans kick in, it's surprisingly not that loud. It's like high 30s, maybe 40 decibels. So a little bit quieter than some notebooks out there. Now in terms of its thermal signature, I really wish I had my friend's Fleur camera that I had from the razor blade review. Okay, remember that rubber rim I talked about in the beginning of this video? So I ran some benchmark programs. If you leave the notebook sitting regularly, it actually gets quite warm at the bottom. It doesn't seem like it was as hot as a razor blade, but it's still pretty warm. But the weird thing is if you prop up the base with some pencils or something, just so that air can flow through the bottom more readily, it gets so much less hot, which is so weird to me. I mean, like, why didn't HP just make a couple more holes on that rim? I mean, it didn't get that hot without raising it, but it was a lot cooler when you propped it up a bit. The speakers are clear and the flashing lights are kind of fun, but they're not very loud, which is kind of surprising and disappointing because the notebook has the whole Beats audio moniker to it. But here's what they sound like. Okay, let's talk about battery life. I thought the HP Omen would have a really bad battery life because it has the same size battery as the Dell Inspiron 7000 with the 4K screen. They both share 58 watt hour batteries. And if you'll remember my Inspiron review, battery life was not one of its strong points. But because this notebook, the HP Omen, does not have a 4K screen, the battery life is significantly better. So on regular use with just regular internet browsing, uh, just using the computer regularly, but full screen on time, four and a half hours. That's very impressive to me because, I mean, this is with screen at almost full brightness. They advertised five and I was getting four and a half. So that's pretty cool. Uh, games, hour and a half. Now this is with Heroes of the Storm, which isn't a particularly graphically intensive game, but I think if you play a game that has is more graphically intense, you'll probably get closer to an hour. But I tried this twice, full, full charge, max brightness, basically max volume, one and a half hours playing Heroes of the Storm. So that's pretty cool. And the last test I did was just watching movies straight from the drive. So I watched Game of Thrones, uh, three and a half hours. A little bit more than that, but three and a half hours, which is also pretty impressive to me. Okay, gaming on this thing, this thing plays games well. I tried most of my games at 1920 by 1080 on high settings and some games on ultra settings and every game ran really, really well, like 60 to 90 frames per second, depending on the game. And I think the 860M is a really perfect match for the 1080p screen. The screen and the video card feel really well balanced and you're never tempted to run at a high resolution because, well, you, you just can't. So unlike other notebooks where I'm constantly trying to find the balance between higher resolution and performance, this thing, you just kind of set it and forget it at 1920 by 1080. Every game that I tried ran really well on it and I really like that. Okay, so my final thoughts on the HP Omen really depends on the price that you're able to purchase it for. When HP first put this out on the market, they were asking 21 or 2200 bucks for a fully spec'd out version. And I mean, that's expensive. That's razor blade expensive. But over time, they've put this thing on sale a couple times, and right now you can get a medium spec one with 16 gigs of RAM, four gigs of video RAM for 15, 1600 bucks. To me, that's very well spec and very reasonably priced. So if you're a gamer and you're gonna put this to use, I think that's a very good option for you. As for the design, I think people will be torn. I think some people will love it, and I think some people will hate it, just because some of the design elements are a little bit flashy. And if it's not your cup of tea, you might find it a little abrasive. 
Personally, I think it's really cool, but it's a little too colorful and edgy for me right now. I think if I was younger, I'd go crazy for it, but currently I like my stuff a little more subtle and boring, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the review. I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, give me some thumbs, and if you loved it, give me some subs. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.